Okay, if you don't know, my name is Nick. I live in the Catskills. That's upstate New York. I do a lot of working on the truck videos, like this truck that you can't see. This is a Ram 2500. It's the 2021. I also do working on working in the shop videos and in the house. If you like that sort of stuff, subscribe. Uh, this video is going to be about heat. Now, I have a big project I'm ready to start on this Ram. Massive. It's going to take me a while. It's going to have a lot of hours in the shop. And it is end of December, and it's going to take me into the beginning of January. So I got to stay warm and I got to stay warm like the fastest way possible. So I wanted to show you how I do that and cheaply. I also want to do it cheaply as well. I want to show you how I do it. I got a couple of little tricks. This is not really like a, oh, look at all these hacks to keep the heat. No, it's just how I do it. And maybe you might find it interesting. You might learn something. Uh, let's get started with the kerosene. This is a Dynaglo Pro 80,000 BTU heater. It cost me 200 bucks. I bought it six years ago. This thing will heat up this garage minutes. Minutes it will be warm in here. It doesn't really matter how cold it is outside. Now, obviously, I'm insulated. I'm completely insulated. Sides, top, even the two garage doors, which are huge, those are insulated. So I am insulated, but yeah, this thing, 1,400 square feet, you know, 50 degrees. Really, it doesn't really, I mean, if it's negative 40 outside, which has never been, uh, we're gonna have a problem. But we're talking anything above zero degrees outside, you're gonna get this thing to 50 in no time. I use it for the first 15 minutes and that's it. I set the temp as a dial over here. I set it to like mm, 60, 65. Sometimes within those 15 minutes, this thing will turn off because it's reached 60 degrees. It's really that quick. It's loud, that's the bad part, but if you're using it like me, it doesn't really matter that it's loud because it's just, it's a very short amount of time and then you're turning it off, you're done. The next thing is that it uses some serious kerosene. There's no doubt about that. I believe this tank is like five gallons. I'll, I'll put it at the bottom. I think it says nine hours this will run on a full tank. That's a lot of kerosene per hour. If you're using it 15 minutes like me, yeah, this thing could last you a month. But again, it is loud and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you listen to it or I'm gonna turn it on and basically maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna warn you first is that I'm not gonna lower it. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna talk and you can listen and if, if you want turn your volume down so you don't get blasted but let's hit this button I'll show you. That's a little starter sound kind of like a propane stove or gas stove. Alright I'm talking normally like right now you probably can hear me. But uh, I'll put the words on the screen also. Put your hand in front of it. Not that bad. Touch it. Doesn't even feel warm at all. Well, in that respect, it's safe. The blower on this thing, that's what makes it great. That's what heats up something this big that, that quickly is the blower. That's what's making the noise. This is not really, this one, the 80,000 is not a small shop heater. Uh, they make other ones though that are a lot smaller. I think these are called bullet heaters and they need electricity to run. That's important. But other than that, I'm very happy with it. The fill is back here. There's a little uh, gauge for fuel. In fact, it says right here, runtime 059, so nine hours. Oh, it is nine hours it runs for. One trick I'll give you before I go, this is how I fill it. I use one of these. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to spill kerosene on this thing because let's also not forget there's a big flame coming out of it and I, I really want to be as safe as possible. It's obviously not as quick as pouring, but it's very, very safe. So that's what I use. I mean, you can get one of those on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. They're very cheap. So again, I use this for only 15 minutes. What do I do after that? Let's talk about the wood stove. When we first moved into this house full time 2016, there was an oil burner in this garage. There was a tank in the back and there was an oil burner because the guy that built this shop was in here 10 hours a day. He was always in here. So we had an oil burner. We yanked that thing out. As soon as, soon as I got here full time, it was taking up a ton of room. I didn't want the tank in the back. I didn't want to deal with the oil leaking. So we yanked that. I kept the exhaust though, and I put in a small wood stove in a really old one, and it was very small. And it worked for a little while until I started coming here in here a lot. And then I need to devise a new plan, which uh, was this barrel stove. Now, you can see 
what I do now. I come in in the morning and I flick that that kerosene heater on. And while that's that's the first thing I do is I hit that button and then I come over here to the stove and I start setting up a fire. You know, I start chopping the wood, I start, you know, cutting my kindling, I'm getting it all set up, I start it. It takes a little while, obviously, and while that's going, the kerosene heater is doing its job. Now, one thing I'll say about this barrel stove is, is that, well, I'll say more than one thing, I'll say a few things. First thing is, is that this thing holds so much wood, it's ridiculous. It holds, it holds a barrel full, it holds, it's a 55 gallon drum full of wood. That's a lot of wood. The next thing is, it's ridiculously cheap to make one of these. The kit, this is a kit, this door, and I don't know what you want to call the escutcheon that goes around it. This little handle right here, the connection to the actual exhaust, right? The stove pipe, the legs. It's all in a kit and it was like 60 bucks, I think it cost me. Maybe even less than that, maybe like 55. And then you got the barrel. Barrel could be like 10 bucks, five bucks. I mean, it really honestly, super cheap. So for under a hundred bucks and a little bit of labor, you're gonna be able to get this thing done. You're gonna need some tools, a grinder, you know, a, a reciprocating saw, like a Sawzall or a reciprocating saw. That would help. I mean, if you had a plasma cutter, clearly you're in great shape, but you're probably not building a, a burn barrel if you got a plasma cutter. Well, maybe you are, but they are, they're incredible. The last thing that's great about them is, is that since it's a barrel, it's very thin. The metal is super thin. You get that fire started, and literally within 10 seconds, I swear to you, within 10 seconds, you can't touch, you cannot touch the, the barrel right here. That's how fast it is. So fast. I mean, it's like freaking three layers of tinfoil. That's how thin these, these barrels are. But that is great for heating stuff up, for sure. Now, what is it sitting in? Well, <laughs> that's the oil tank. I took the I took the oil tank and chopped it up and made it so that uh, it was like a heat shield. Burn barrels, they're amazing. You can't use them in a house. I mean, you could if you're crazy, but maybe a big cabin. But if you had a small cabin, say 250 square feet, you put one of these things in here, nah. You could not put one of these burn barrels in a, in a 300 square foot cabin you couldn't run it for a half an hour. Now, I'll say also say this, just having the wood stove going without a fan, not great. This area will be hot. If you get this thing cooking, yeah, it's probably gonna do good, but if you want it to, if you don't wanna burn like half a quart of wood to get the shop hot, you need a fan. And I have a plastic fan up there, it's a you know low, medium, high fan. I have it hanging right on the wall, pointed right at where the heat's gonna come off. And I have that blowing. And usually I can keep it on low and it's fine. Maybe in the beginning I turn it on high, but uh, once you get this thing filled up with wood, I have to work it in a t-shirt. That's how good it is. Now, wood, you know, wood can be expensive, but I really kind of burn anything in this. I'm not looking for crazy hardwood. I'm not looking for the most BTUs per wood because if you think about it, this thing is huge. That's kind of like, I guess the fourth great thing about it is, is that as long as the wood is really dry, so you don't have to worry about like, you know, screwing up your pipe with pine. Like you don't want to wet pine. You don't want to put that in here clearly, right? You could, you could set the place on fire. But anything that's really, really super dry, I don't care what it is, put it in here because the barrel's so huge. It's not like a wood stove in your house where you want to use the most BTUs per square inch of wood. You want that, whatever it is. You want your, your hard maple, your oak, your whatever, right? Your cherry. You want that because you only have a certain amount of space inside one of those wood stoves. This thing is ridiculous. You could put anything in here. You could heat this place on dried pine. You, you, you could heat it on poplar if you wanted to because there's so much room in here. And that's, I guess that's kind of the last thing I want to point out about how it doesn't matter what type of wood you have, this is going to work. And I just, if I see a log, I just throw it in the truck. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I don't even care what it is. As long as it's dry, if I'm driving around and I see a nice log cut up beautifully, maybe the power company cuts some stuff down, I just throw it in the bed. I throw it in the bed. Anything that falls down on the property, I don't care what it is. Don't care. I don't care if it's pine, if it's you know, hemlock. I don't care. I'm chopping it up and I'm burning it for heat because of how much room is in this thing. So that's it. 
that's what I do. To get it started also, uh, use one of these propane. I'll give you a tip on this. Use one of these things. Don't screw around. Don't, don't screw around with a lighter or matches or anything like that, and newspaper. Get one of these propane um, with, the little, with the little hookup on top. This thing is awesome. It's super fast. I mean, that's fast. And it'll get you going within, geez, probably 30 seconds as long as you have it, as long as you have it set up right. I use, I just use a cheap little hatchet right here. I use it right here to cut stuff. Um, I also use one of these freaking grandma supermarket carts. <laughs> I take this thing, I, I bring it right over the door because I keep the wood in the back. And I just load it up and I roll it right on over here. I've loaded this thing up to the freaking brim. Rolls, no problem. And, and that's it. Um, I touch the metal, do not touch the metal. This handle comes with it, it's great. You open it up. The opening is down here. I can tell you that um, if you if you get this thing, I mean, you know about starting wood stoves. I guess I really shouldn't give you tips on that, but if you try and load this thing up with wood and throw gasoline in it <laughs> and light it up, you'd have a major problem. Clearly, you want to start it slow. That's the reason for the kerosene heater. You got to light it up. I light it up right in front of this grate right here. I get it going. It's nice. It heats up, heats up the pipe, gets the flow going, and then it work, the flame works towards the back where I get all the bigger stuff. And then we get... Um, we get some nice coals in here, and this thing will last all day. Yeah. So, uh, so that's it. All right, everyone, I got to get started on this big project. Probably you're going to see it in the next video. All right, thanks.